Continuing in the book of Psalms, we are in Psalm 22, verse 27. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 27, Psalm 22. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. And there is coming a wonderful new time for planet earth and it will begin when Jesus Christ returns and sets up his kingdom at that point and from that point on for a thousand years according to scripture people will serve the Lord they will be filled with the Holy Spirit and things will be the way God intended them to be on this planet when he created it in the first place Verse 28, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. That's what's going to make it such a wonderful place. 29, all the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Before the millennium starts, the unrighteous who have rejected Christ will be banished to hell. Verse 30, Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Gen there won't be any generation gap because everybody's going to be focused on Jesus. 31. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. And so generation after generation will learn from about the Lord from the previous generation, which is the way it should be in the church age, but often is not. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. And notice, the Lord has to be your shepherd, not just the shepherd, but your shepherd. And then you will have everything that you want, everything that you truly need. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters, gentleness, peace. That's ours in Christ. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God will restore your soul, especially when you read the word of God. Prayer, Bible reading, Bible studying restores our soul. It refreshes us. And he guides us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake so that our lives will glorify him. The fact that we are blessed in a holy life is secondary. Verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When the time for your death comes, if you know the Lord, it will be a smooth transition. He will be with you. You won't skip a beat. He is your God, He is your Father, He is your Savior here on earth. He will be those things for you as you are dying, and He will be those things for you on the other side of death. There will be no fear. Sometimes it's fearful to think of our death, isn't it? But it's kind of ironic that if we are Christians, when the time comes, He'll give us the grace, and we won't have any fear at that time. 5. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Prosperity, good times, victory over all the things that have harassed us and all the people maybe who have harassed us in the past. They're all going to be just a distant memory. Six, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And that is true. I like the translation of the old King James. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the day of my life, days of my life. We need God's mercy to follow us like a heat-seeking missile because we're constantly getting ourselves into trouble, aren't we? We sin and God's mercy is right there following us, taking care of that sin. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that doesn't mean you're going to live inside of a church forever. It doesn't mean you're going to live inside of a, a temple like they had in the Old Testament forever. Um, I don't think that would be much fun. But what it's talking about is that you're going to have fellowship with God forever. And that's the big thing that's going to make heaven, heaven. Unbroken fellowship with God. And we get a taste of that as Christians in this life, don't we? And it's fun. It's enjoyable to fellowship with God. I hope you're fellowshipping with God right now as we're studying the Word. But it's going to be much more intense. It's going to be perfect fellowship and unending fellowship. Everything that we do, and we'll be doing all sorts of things for all eternity. But we'll never leave the presence of God. We'll always be aware of His presence. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Now, that means that everything that you and I have is lent to us by God. He owns everything, which is why we shouldn't complain when we don't have something. We shouldn't complain when we lose something, because it wasn't ours to begin with. Even the people, even our loved ones, they all belong to God. Verse 2, talking about the world, he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And you remember back in Genesis 1-1 when the earth was nothing but water in its initial state. 3. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? In other words, who can, who can have fellowship with God? He answers his own question. Here it is, verse 4. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol, or swear by what is false. In other words, somebody who's in fellowship with God. You've had your sins forgiven through Jesus Christ, and you don't have any unconfessed sins in your life that you are aware of. Notice verse 5. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from his Savior. There's this blessing in walking with the Lord. And in addition to that, there'll be eternal rewards for the obedient and, and other things, good things that are enjoyed in this life, all because of your fellowship with him. Six, such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. The Bible says, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you will find him. Seven, lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. This describes our Lord's ascension into heaven 40 days after he was raised from the dead. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. It is Jesus, the King of glory. He accomplished salvation for us on the cross. And after he was finished and after he was raised from the dead, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, the place of glory, the place of power. And that is where he reigns. And he will stay there until it is time for him to return to earth. Thanks for spending this time with me. See you next time. So long, everyone.